Good evening. My name is Stacy Gallagher. I'm one of the counselors here in the Counseling Center at Orchard Hill Church, and I'm so excited and honored to be a part of your night tonight. Um, tonight we're going to be working through Psalm 38, um, and just wanted to let you know that there are people online right now in the chat. If you have any prayer requests or any specific concerns, um, you can go ahead and start connecting with some people right away. You know, we're in the middle of this quarantine, and I don't know about you, but I'm kind of feeling so over it at this point. Um, I've had about one day a week where I really am just down and out and so over it and overwhelmed um, by it. The word quarantine um, comes from the Italian word, which means 40. And if you look in the Bible, the number 40 is, is identifying a time of um, probation time, a period of trial, a period of chastisement, um, and a period of change. So for the Jews, whenever 40 was mentioned in the Bible, it was always discussing a period of change. Um, for example, the flood, um, the great flood lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The Jews wandered the desert for 40 years. Um, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. Um, Jonah warned Nineveh for 40 days to repent and to turn. And our Savior Jesus appeared to his disciples and people after his resurrection for 40 days. So when we think of the word 40, and I'm thinking of quarantine, and I, I, I'm thinking that it's a totally different attitude to take, that rather than be in this place of despair and wondering when is it going to end, um, taking a look at it as it's 40 days that God is going to use to chastise us and to change us. And I think the beginning of that, um, we see here in Psalm 38. And how does that start? Psalm 38 was written by um, David, and it's listed as a memorial, a remembrance. But it really goes through um, a confession. Um, we don't know necessarily whether it's a particular sin or a situation in David's life that he was praying about, or whether it was just about his um, vivid awareness of his sinful nature. But what I do love about the Psalms and about David is that he is always so um, willing to openly confess. Um, you know, when I think about, about confession and sin, it's not something that I find to be necessarily joyful. Um, I grew up in a, in a religious practice where confession was encouraged on a regular basis. And I can remember as a kid going into my time of confession as like a checkbox, like a multiple choice. You've got 10, you've got 10 commandments, and, and which one am I checking off to confess today? Um, no real specificity to it, and sometimes as a child, I would also just say, and forgive me for something I might have forgotten. Well, what I like about Psalm 38 is that David goes in is very specific, not necessarily about his sin, but very specific about how sin impacts us and how important it is to confess. I wanna shift our thinking, um, mine was shifted in doing my study for preparation for this, is that the changing the duty of confession, which is kind of what I grew up with, um, I kind of felt like you needed to confess your sins because that was what you were supposed to do. Um, and with that comes maybe some judgment but the number 40 is not the number used for judgment in the Bible. Um, it's used for chastisement and discipline. Um, and rather, I want to shift by looking at Psalm 38, my duty of confession, to the beauty of confession. What we see in the pages in the words of David is an intimate exchange between he and his God, his Savior. Um, so intimate that he could be honest with him um, about how low he was and how he felt. And it, I woke up this morning realizing what a beautiful opportunity it is we have to confess our sins to a loving God. It starts in verse 1, um, which I think is kind of funny because it, 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 it reminds me of a parent and a child. O oh Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. I've got to be honest with you, there are times raising my four children that I have discipline them um, in anger. One of my favorite ones 
one of our children, who I will not name, um, was not speaking very kindly and very sweetly. So we thought it would be a great idea to take away sweets, since what was coming out of her mouth wasn't sweet, that she wasn't allowed to put anything in her mouth that was sweet. Well, it happened on a day that we were celebrating somebody's birthday, and so this poor little four-year-old um, was unable to have cake. Um, so we made a decision in anger um, because we didn't like the way that she was talking to us. And we made a decision that really, quite frankly, didn't discipline her in any way because we saved her a piece of cake for the next day. So I'm not so sure that um, that, that worked out. But I love how, how David approaches the Lord like a father. And we know that, that God is capable of wrath and anger, but we are begging him at the beginning of Psalm to... Lord, don't discipline me in your anger, but rather looking back at this beauty of this confession and the beauty that comes from with it. Um, in verses 2 through 4, we take a look at the weight of his sin. For your arrows have sunk into me, and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden are too heavy for me. I don't know about you, but when I think about the things that I've done wrong and I'm really faced with the reality of my own sin, it sometimes becomes a little too heavy to bear um, and can become overwhelming. Um, I think of Jesus when, when Peter was walking on water and he was going out to Jesus and he started sinking and the waves started crashing over him. Um, it's kind of what I think sin feels like. When we're, when we're faced with it and honest with how, how it actually impacts us. But what I found really interesting in verses five through eight, it really talks about the physicality of sin and how it makes you feel. And I find it really interesting in this time of quarantine and we're so aware of the coronavirus, how this um, description of sin is very similar to what a virus would do to our bodies. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate all the day. I go about mourning, for my sides are filled with burning, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and crushed, and I groan because of the tumult of my heart. You know, like the virus that we're fighting against and trying to flatten the curve, um, I think the greatest virus, the greatest pandemic all along has been sin in our lives. Um, and this is, again, a description, a very honest, open, intimate description of how this sin is impacting Daniel or David. Um, in verses 9 through 14, it talks about the emotional impact of sin. I think as a counselor, I'm reading through verses 9 through 14 and hearing, hearing the psalmist describe what depression feels like. You know, I work a lot with, with clients who suffer from anxiety and depression, and one thing that I'm so grateful for during this time, quite honestly, is those days that I talked about, the one day a week where I feel overwhelmed by the, by the magnitude of the coronavirus and, and this pandemic, and I suffer into feeling very underwater and overwhelmed by the weight of all of that. I think it helps me to understand kind of what a person suffering with depression feels like. Maybe you're suffering from depression now and, and you don't feel like anybody can understand it or explain it. I think the pages of scripture right here um, shows that David um, understands what it's like to, to feel like the light has gone from your eyes in verse 10. I, was, I had a little humor. It says, my friends and companions stand aloof from my plague. I'm not sure that's talking about social distancing, but rather the feeling of being so isolated in your sin um, and how that must feel. You know, I can kind of understand, um, kind of understand maybe what that might feel like being left in that. And what I like right beyond that is, is there's, a, there's a switch. When I was 19 years old, I was in a car accident that involved another, um, another person who was on a motorcycle. And without going into a ton of detail, um, the end result of that is, is the other person um, in the accident was killed. And I remember being a 19 year old in the hospital getting checked out because I wasn't really injured, but they needed me to check me out anyhow. And um, my parents were going back and forth. I grew up in a small town not far from here. Um, so there was one hospital. So both the other guy and I were in the same hospital. And my parents were going back and forth um, just getting reports, which this was obviously, I'm giving away my age, but prior to the time of um, HIPAA. And so they were able to find out some information about what was happening with the other gentleman. 
And I remember my parents coming in, my dad coming in distraught because um, he had found out that the other guy had died. Um, and to this day, um, the feeling, the weight of, of that, of what I had caused and what I had done, I think that kind of relates to the weight of sin um, and the darkness that comes from that. Um, there is nothing that I have been probably more sorrowful for than that and the pain that I caused that family. And I remember specifically needing to go against my parents' um, advisement and needing to go speak to the mother of this man um, and to his family. And believe it or not, they let me into the room where they were mourning and grieving, and I, um, I just needed to apologize. I just needed to say I was sorry. And do you know what happened? Um, the apology was for me. I needed to come, come clean with something that was strictly an accident. Um, but this mother of this man gave me a hug and forgave me. You know, when we look at verse 15, there's a turn in this confession of David. There's a turn, and he looks and he says, But for you, O Lord, I wait. You know, repentance is a gift from God. And we know that we can bring it to him like a good doctor. Um, he's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. You know, if I were to have stayed in that place, in that, that nature of depression and despair, um, without having the forgiveness, I can't imagine what my life would have been like. We don't need to stay in that place of despair from our sin and from the wrongs that we've done. We have a gracious God. Verse 15, but for you, O Lord, I do wait. It is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. You know, chastisement comes from a Latin root, castigare, um, which means to set right or to make pure. We wait for God. We wait for him to make us pure when we confess our sins to him, when we come to him with the things that we've done wrong. Father God, I pray for everybody that's watching and listening to this devotional, God, that maybe has not studied Psalm 38. Um, I pray for the people who have maybe a fear of confessing, Lord, for feel like it's con condemning or that you are a God who will be angry or wrathful. Um, God, I pray that you would change the hearts of people, that we would see confession as a beautiful, intimate exchange with you um, as we trust in knowing your goodness and your mercy and your forgiveness. Lord, thank you for being our ultimate healer. We confess our sins as a nation to you as well as individuals. God, we pray that during this time you would heal our nation, that whatever you are chastising us for, that you are preparing us for, that you are changing us to turn towards, that we would be aware of that. And God, we thank you so much for being who you are. We thank you that you are a God that is loving and kind and forgiving. God, show us where we can be forgiving of other people. Please don't let our unforgiveness of others interfere with your forgiveness of us, but rather let us extend the forgiveness to those around us so that like me, when I experienced the forgiveness from that mom in that hospital room, people around us could have a living, breathing understanding of what forgiveness is and what a truly precious gift it is from you. Amen. Thanks for joining us tonight.